with the NVIDIA Tegra 4 processor, a whopping 72 core GPU and 2 GB of RAM, the NVIDIA Shield practically blew us away when it was announced in January 2013. Since its launch we've also seen a second next gen Shield device which is the Shield tablet running a Tegra K1 but aside from that has identical specs. So how does the original Shield portable, as they now call it, hold up in 2015 against fierce competition from other phones and tablets? Let's find out in this video. So the Nvidia Shield is still a super nippy device. It's actually one of the fastest Android devices I've ever used, and it's actually running Android 4.4 KitKat with a hopefully incoming update to Android 5.0 Lollipop. Now the reason I say hopefully in coming is because Nvidia haven't officially said anything, but they've been seriously consistent with their updates so far. So the Nvidia Shield has been one of the first to get Android 4.4 KitKat, and to be honest the Nvidia Shield tablet was the first mainstream device to actually get Lollipop, so Nvidia really have put some attention into the software side of things with their Shield devices. Internet browsing is super nippy, I'm yet to see a device that is actually noticeably faster than this. So now let's do an Antutu benchmark. Okay, so the Nvidia Shield scores 39,695, which puts it pretty much right at the top of the charts. I mean, this isn't quite the sort of chart-topping MX4 here, but actually in terms of real-world performance, I'd actually say it performs better. So, I mean, the reason this is maybe scoring slightly less than devices such as the HC1 M8 is possibly because it's just got a slightly lower clock speed, and to be honest, it could be also due to optimization issues. Don't forget, this is using a Cortex A15 CPU, and so this is actually the same CPU that is used in almost all high-end flagship Android devices at the minute, the only difference being the 72-core GPU, which is obviously doing more good than bad. I mean, the only device which probably has a more powerful GPU than this is the Nvidia Shield tablet and the Nexus 9, which support Tegra K1 processors. So in terms of the actual internal components, aside from perhaps the slightly lowly 2GB of RAM, the Shield is still way up there. Let's not forget that this also has only a 720p display, which, okay, clearly is not exactly the retina screen a lot of people were hoping for, but at the same time this makes it significantly, significantly faster than a similar device with a 1080p display. So, I mean, there's much less pixels to push, which means that, you know, games perform better, everything on this device will flow faster. And furthermore, it actually saves on battery, and battery is one of the huge selling points of this device. It is absolutely huge, and lasts for pretty much three days on a moderate sort of usage level, you know, to play some games, do some internet browsing, all the sorts of things you might use a tablet for, so absolutely insane in terms of battery. So coming on to 2015, now 2015 is when most phones and tablets are going to start to adopt the 64-bit architecture, which is, to be honest, not going to make a noticeable difference to begin with. I think that by 2016 this will be fully implemented, but because the sort of main gains from 64-bit architecture are the support for increased RAM above 4GB, I don't think that will actually make a huge difference. So I think that, you know, the Nvidia Shield is going to be still perfectly relevant today, it's going to be perfectly relevant with the whole of next year, and maybe by 2016 it's going to start to fade behind. So it's still extremely fast at emulators, extremely fast at all the Android games that it supports, which is pretty much all of them. And so, I mean, clearly it won't be the fastest chip by the end of next year, but it'll be more than fast enough to do everything you want to do on your Android device. There has not been a game yet that can actually fully push the Nvidia Shield to its limit. And if there is ever going to be one, then it will also strain all the current high-end devices. There's nothing on the market right now which I could say is definitely more powerful than this, aside from those sporting a Tegra K1. Now the Snapdragon 810 and 808, which are going to be coming next year, are octa-core CPUs, and those actually promise to be up to 70% faster than the current generation of chips. So yes, they will actually be a good step ahead of the NVIDIA Tegra 4. 
as long as they sort of, you know, they perform anywhere near as much as the claims, which does tend to be the case. I mean, claims do tend to be exaggerated a little bit, but they definitely give a good idea of where we're at. So yeah, those will be very, very powerful chips, and I would like to see some more demanding games come alongside them, which is probably what will happen. Usually when Nvidia or Qualcomm release their new chips, they will also release a sort of showcase of new games which are optimised to use all that power, so hopefully then we'll actually see the next step up in terms of visual quality on mobile devices, and maybe then the Tegra 4 might struggle a little bit, but this is still a super powerful device and I thoroughly recommend the Shield.